Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, thank you. Hey, did everybody enjoy the uh, Sunshine Road? Praise God. They were awesome, wasn't they? Amen. Did everybody get a CD? No. Yes. Huh? Because yes. they left some CDs, said if anybody wanted a CD, right there they are. Oh, Amen. So, uh, yep, got a stack of them. Amen. Yeah. So uh, help yourself to it. If you, if you need one, they're, they're free. Uh, they made it home okay. They, yeah, yeah. They called me, let me know they made it home okay. So, all right. Missouri. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, I think today they're in. Uh, they're either in Ohio or Pennsylvania. Cause they was going from. Yeah. Then they, uh, but anyway, you know what? Maybe it's a blessing. I felt the presence of the Lord in it. Amen. And that's the important thing, ain't it? Let's start this off with prayer, if you would. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come tonight. And God, as we enter into this service, God, God, we just fully submit ourselves to you. Father, we just ask that you take charge, that you lead us, you direct us, you guide us. God, will follow after you. For, Father, you said that you'd go before us and prepare the way. So, God, we just know that we know that we know that, God, your plan for us is a plan of good and not of evil to give us an expected end. God, we're, we're trusting in you. For you said, lean not to our own understanding, but just to trust in you. Father, that's what we're doing this evening. Father, we thank you, Father, that you allowed us in your house. God, we just, we just ask that, God, that that, uh, God, you touch each and every person in here, God. That, God, when they leave, they leave with a closer walk to you, Father. Yes. And, Father, we just praise you, Father, for it's your will, not our will, be done tonight. And, God, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. And we'll do it all in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Whew, I'm so thankful that I have him to call on. Because you know what? This old life is not the easiest life. We run across obstacles here and obstacles there. And, and the good news is, is he's always there to, to help us get over the hump. Amen. He didn't say that he had removed the hump, but he said, I'll take you through the hump. Amen. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Bless you. You got another one? Bless you in advance. Amen. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how, you know, God didn't put out the fire, but he went through the fire with them. And the Bible tells us that they come out smelling like a rose. Well, not like a rose, but there was no, no, they didn't smell like smoke. Amen. Praise God. But you see, that's, that's the promises of God that we stand upon. And he gives us these promises to encourage us, to tell us that, hey, there, he didn't promise it's going to be smooth sailing. He didn't. I think sometimes people, they, they come to church and they receive Jesus. And, and it's kind of like what they talk about the sower. You know, some have no roots. And they'll be on fire. And, and they think, boy, it's going to be smooth sailing now. And, and of course, the enemy is not going to allow that. No, the enemy is definitely going to try to throw some kind of obstacle in there, some roadblock. But, you know, and we give up just short of all the miracles that God has for us. And I thought about, you know, how the Bible tells us that we've been empowered. We have the power, the authority. In the very first book of the Bible, in Genesis 1, verse 28, God said, I give you dominion and authority. But we, we seldom take it. We're looking for some kind of miracle just to come through on, on the least little thing. When God said, hey, speak to the mountain. He didn't say talk about that mountain. He said, speak to that mountain and it'll be cast into the sea. You know, we're, we're looking for somebody else to do. We've become lazy. 
Let's just say it like it is. We've become lazy. God, we want you to come do this. No, God said, hey, we walk by faith. He didn't say we sat by faith. No, sometimes you've got to get up off your blessed assurance. And do the walk. You know, we do the talk, but we don't do the walk. You know, God said, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll hold your hand through this thing. And the key to it is through. Not to, but through. And we, you know, when we learn that, when we get really get to where we learn that, yeah, there's going to be problems in our life. That's just life. There is. Nobody's immune from it. But the good news is, is we're not having to do it by ourselves. We've got a Savior that said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So we can trust in Him to, even when it, we can't see the, the end results. You know, faith is not seeing it. Just believing that God is a God of His Word, that He said He'll bring you through, and He will. Amen. What would you need faith if you already knew the answer? You know, that's kind of like when I, I tape my ball games. And, and so I always, already know the end results. I do. So then I can watch them, and I already know. I don't need faith to hope, praying that they're going to make it. You know, if they're going to win, I already know the score. I'm just watching to see how they did it, you know. That's not faith. Amen. We've got faith all mixed up here. We, and if we can just come to trust in Him. Amen. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Can we do what a friend we I think I had you do that last time, didn't I? Oh, I, I love that. I love that song. What a friend. You know, I did a sermon on that song. And that's all I used was the song. Amen. Hey, guys, you can sing along with it. Amen. You don't mind if they sing along, do you? Maybe with John Douglas, but the rest of us all can sing along. Okay, I'm going to sing this song. I've been practicing it over and over and over, and hopefully it's going to sound right. 
<clears throat> Anyhow, I'm singing it because this young man over here, sitting by his wife here, gave me the tape and he asked me to sing it. Letters of crimson, God wrote his love. On a hillside so long, long ago For you and for me Jesus died And life's greatest story was told I love you, love you, that's what Calvary said, I love you, I love you. God wrote his love with the same hands that suffered and bled, giving all that he had to give, message so easily. What Calvary said I love you I love you I love you Oh precious Song, brother. Come on. Well, I wanted to sing and encourage Trish with the song that she asked me to write. And uh, since she's dealing with a bad report, I wanted to encourage her. Um, 
you know, life deals us all bad reports at one time or another. And the, and the Bible says that anything that's contrary to the word of God is an evil report. Amen. And he's given us his word so that we can have confidence of what he's done, what he wants to see, what he will do, what he has done. In fact, you go through the word and Moses said, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you and no plague shall come near your dwelling. And Paul said, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he gives life to your mortal body. David said to bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits, that he forgives all iniquities and heals all our diseases. Jesus said, you can speak to any mountain that's in your way and it must obey you. And Peter said, he has given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers in the divine nature. And the divine nature is divine healing for the wholeness of our spirit, soul, and body. So we thank you, Jesus, for your precious word. Thank you, Lord. Even though the cover is tattered and torn. Hallelujah. Jesus, your word breathes life into my soul. The cover's frayed, the pages they're stained, but it's truth has made me whole. Jesus, your word breathes life into my soul. Though the cover's frayed and the pages are stained, its truth will make me whole. It's tattered and torn, it's weathered and worn, but it's precious all the more. Jesus, your word breathes life into my soul. The cover's frayed, the pages are stained, but its truth has made me whole. It's been spit on by fools who despise all its rules, but its grace shines greater still. Jesus, your word, it breathes life into my soul. Though the cover's frayed and the pages are stained, your truth makes me completely whole. Amen. Tom number one. Oh, Lord, Jim. Do you have a song, brother? A few weeks back, I was watching TV, was flipping through the channels, and I came up on the Gaither Music Gospel Hour. <laughs> and I was watching the Gaither Music Gospel Hour, and I heard this song, and I loved this song. And so I went on Google and Googled it, where I would have the lyrics to it. So. We knew he was dead, it is finished, he said. We had watched as his life ebbed away. Then we all stood around 
till the guards took him down. Joseph begged for his body that day. It was late afternoon when we got to the tomb, wrapped his body and sealed up the grave. So I know how you feel, his death was so real, but please listen and hear what I say. I've just seen Jesus, I tell you he's alive. I've just seen Jesus, our precious Lord alive. And I knew he really saw me too, as of till now I never lived. All that I'd done before won't matter anymore. I've just seen Jesus. And I'll never be the same again. It was his voice she first heard, those kind, gentle words. Ask him what was her reason for tears. And I sobbed in despair, my Lord is not there. He said, child, it is I, I am here. I've just seen Jesus, I tell you he's alive. I've just seen Jesus, our precious Lord alive. And I knew he really saw me too, as if till now I never lived. And I, all that I'd done before won't matter anymore. I've just seen Jesus, I've just seen Jesus, I've just seen Jesus. All that I'd done before won't matter anymore. I've just seen Jesus, I'll never be the same again. I've just seen Jesus. You know, that, that boy surprises me every time. That was awesome. When, when, you, when you want to do something, God gives it to you. Oh, yeah. Amen. I want to the, sing for God. Amen. Amen. Now, we've got you to singing. Next, we'll have John Douglas singing. Amen. Yep. Praise God. Charlotte, you got you got a song for us tonight? That was good. You really surprised me. You really you got a good voice. You really do. I'm proud of you. I thought the big book was up here, but it's not. You know the one with the, huh? Oh, the big print. This one, page 156. Yeah. 
That's what he always tells me. <laughs> Page 156. I am determined to hold out to the end. When I first found Jesus, something o'er me stole. Like lightning it went through me, and glory filled my soul. Salvation made me happy, and took my fears away. And when I meet old Satan, to him I always say, I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. And I know I have salvation, for I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. Satan was so angry, he said he'd soon be back. Just let the path get narrow, and he will lose the track. But I'm so full of glory, my Lord I always find. And I just say to Satan, oh man, get thee behind. I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. And I know I have salvation, for I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. This old time religion makes me sometimes shout. I don't Woo! have time to gossip, nor any time to pout. They say that I'm too noisy, but when these blessings flow, I shout, oh hallelujah, I want the world to know. I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend, and I know I have salvation, for I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. When I hear the trumpet sounding in the sky, and see the mountains trembling, to heaven I will fly, for Jesus will be calling. There'll be no time to mend. With joy I'll go on singing. I've held out to the end. I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. And I know I have salvation. For I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. I wasn't known. I guess I was shouting loud enough, huh? <laughs> Doc, did you have a song tonight? I know your singing partner's not here, but. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, we got a prayer request. Amen. One of Sherry's client's daughter passed away this evening. 55 years old. So we need to pray for God's comfort for that family. Amen. Uh, I know that God had a plan. We don't always understand the plan. Sometimes we can't understand why younger people will go home before the older ones. But God had a plan. Listen, it was a plan of good and not of evil. So all we got to do is trust in his plan. Amen. And know that God wouldn't do anything evil toward us so we need to comfort that family with our prayers amen because that's about all we can do 
But God, God is not limited. Amen. Let's call him on to the on to this situation. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight. And God, as we lift up this family, God, God, who's lost their daughter, their sister, their uh, loved one, God. God, we ask for your comfort for that family, Father. A comfort like, that goes beyond understanding, God. God, we don't understand because, God, we should think our hearts are broken. There ain't anything. But, God, we know that, God, that you can mend those broken hearts. God, we know that you can comfort us in the worst times, God. God, that we can have peace when, that goes beyond understanding. And, God, we ask for your, your presence, your your touch upon that family, Father. Father, just console them and let them know that, hey, this is not a, a not not a forever, not a goodbye, but see you later. It's God. We know that God that this is just a temporary separation, and God, we know that we know that we know that God that we can trust your promises. And Father, we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Monty, did you want to sing tonight, sis? <laughs> I guess that's a no. Mary, did you want to sing tonight? No, not tonight, okay. Peggy? No, I didn't. I ain't even going to ask you, John. <laughs> That might be Jesus. I think he was going to call me tonight. Ready? Thank the Lord for cell phones, amen. What did we do before cell phones? You know? Do you, you ever have a party line? Yeah? yeah. You wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait because you, you had to make a call. Get old sister Smith was on the phone forever. Thank God we don't need to wait to make a phone call to Jesus, amen. I want to mention Malden's ministry. A couple of weeks, we're, we're a couple of weeks away from Father's Day. We want them to come and uh, be blessed. Uh, you know, it's very scriptural in the letters of Paul. You know that they took up a collection for this and for that. So what we're doing is is totally biblical and totally right on with the, with the New Testament church. And. Um, Maybe that's enough said about that. And maybe not. But we just want to bless them. Amen. We want to see a church grow. We want to see sweet water. They call it sweet water. And I got to think about that. You know, have you ever taken a drink out of the faucet and it was really, really, yeah, bad? I was reading that in, in some of those villages, they have had to walk three to three and a half miles to get water that is good enough to drink. And when there's a well in front of a church, it's a very special thing for them. And it speaks to them of God's goodness and his love. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided 
to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. No turning back I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back No turning back Though none go with me Still I will follow Though none go with me Still I will follow Though none go with me, still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. Have you decided to follow Jesus? Have you decided? To follow Jesus Have you decided To follow Jesus Don't you turn back Don't turn and back Don't you turn back no turning back. Man, I mean that. Don't you turn back. Don't turn back. So many have. Haven't they? I'm going to come down there. If I have to jump. <clears throat> batteries in there we should be good uh, I was supposed to do that before I started I
Let's see, we're on. We're on. One, two, yay. Okay, it's not as bad as Christmas. Almost. Almost. There's a, there's a song that I have queued up there for Doc to play here in just a minute. But I want to ask you, have you, have you, have you told Jesus that you love him today? Did you spend some time with him in prayer? Did you tell him how much he means to you? Did you tell him that you care? And the um, Lord has been dealing with me to spend some more time in worship. And it's not fancy words, it's not, uh, it might be with this, it's uh, another one of those toys you can't put together. Not fancy words, you know, it is simply a child speaking to, to dad. And dad is uh, God of the universe. Isn't that neat that you can talk to him? I want, if you can stand, I want you to stand tonight just for a few minutes for one song we're going to play and uh, I don't necessarily the songs the words for the song I'll get it straight will be on the screen but I don't necessarily want you to sing the song I want you to tell Jesus again hopefully for the second third fourth whatever time it is maybe it's the first time today that's okay just tell him you love him just tell him you love him that you're so thankful what he, for what he's done for you. Amen. He gave his all. Yes. Sometimes we think, oh, he was God. That was easy. Can I tell you it wasn't? The blood was real. Yeah. The pain he felt was real. Amen. What he went through was real for us. Yes, but he thought so much about us. He thought so much about you, about me. Yes. Amen. Go ahead and play the song. We're just going to worship a minute. Okay. Should be on that. Like I said, we don't have to sing it, but maybe it'll play. Maybe uh, I know I got it off YouTube, so hopefully it came off okay. So it very well may be my fault that it's not playing. If you want to look it up on YouTube, oh, there it goes. Is that going? Is it going? Went blank anyway. It went black. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We don't we don't even need music to worship him, do we? No. No? Man. Let's just worship him. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Lord, we love what you've done for us on the cross of Calvary. It wasn't easy. It wasn't some easy thing to do, to come down from heaven, to Lord, live for us, to live with us, with the apostles and, and those people that derided you and, and uh, blasphemed you and made fun of you and Lord hated you. But God, you did it for us. Lord, even we, before we knew you, Lord, we, we did those very same things. And God, we just, we just want to say thank you. I love on you, Jesus. I care about you, Jesus. Lord, I want to be closer to you. And I just want to say, God, I thank you. I can't thank you enough. Can't thank you enough for what you have done for me. I can't thank you enough, Lord, that you saved me and my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God, and what that means when I stand before you is an eternity. Lord in heaven, eternity with you versus the other. God, I pray, God, that, that you would, uh, through me, show your love to others. Through me to show others how much you love them. And Lord, that same love, that same joy, that same peace that I have would be theirs. And that they too would be eternally in heaven. We just love on you, Jesus. We just love on you, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Lord Jesus, I don't ask you for anything right now other than really just to say I love you, Jesus. 
love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the song? Oh, we were in, it was uh, Give Us Clean Hands. Huh? Give Us Clean Hands? Clean give Hands. Us, give Us Clean Hands. Oh, I didn't tell him that, huh? No wonder he didn't know. Um, to the age, you know, forgetful. Somewhat. Neurologists are stunned. They've confirmed that ear ringing is shrinking your brain cells. <laughs> That applies, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. I heard something about brain cells, so. This works to me.
forget to tell him. Don't forget to show him your love. Amen? Got a little slide here. Ah, there it is. I thought, well, I thought we did. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless us in your word. Lord, it's, it's a simple word, and it just needs to speak to our hearts in a way maybe it hasn't before. But lead us where you want us to go tonight. Lord, teach us what you want us to learn tonight. Lord, just use me however you want to, Lord. And speak just words of life and liberty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Follow me. Follow me. I was been dealing with this for about a little over two months. It came to me and began to speak to me in various ways. There's probably 12 dozen different directions you go with this, and you probably have heard it already if you've been in church a long time, uh, at least three dozen times in your lifetime, maybe four. But I wanted us just to remind us and uh, to think about it uh, in some different ways. I have one disclaimer, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think how to put this. I'm not going to knock a sinner's prayer, okay? That's not my purpose. That's not my understanding. That is not what I wanted to do. But it came to me, and as I began to read some scriptures, I think I was reading through John, Jesus never led anybody in his sinner's prayer. But he did do something that was probably as effective and more effective in so many different ways. And I think what we want to do tonight is learn from Jesus in the way that Jesus showed us by, by doing. And when we lead someone in a sinner's prayer, that we make sure we are telling them what he told. Does that make sense? Okay. Again, this isn't rocket science. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not NASA, not Billy Graham, not even close, <laughs> neither one. I don't know if I want to be close to NASA. It seems like they blow a lot of things up. It's kind of cool when you get to do that, as long as people don't get hurt, Amen. you know. Um, but that's not, that's not me. Uh, I don't build rockets and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to look at a, one scripture in particular. It's on the next slide. It's Matthew 16. And uh, 16 and verse uh, 24. I don't know if you can read that print or not, but hopefully you can, or you can open your Bibles either way. One is as, many, as effective as the other. Um, but if you have questions later on, make sure you go to your Bible and you, you search it out, okay? I don't, would never recommend that you just take my word for everything. Uh, I'm glad my kids didn't. That's something that I messed up, you know. Uh, but I'm glad uh, for their opportunity to be able to search scriptures and learn. And when, and I'm going to say this, you've probably heard me say it before, when I disagree with scriptures, I change. I've learned that in my life. I have to believe what the Bible says. I may not initially like it. Have you ever been there? When you read, have you ever read something in scripture? You go, what? And, and you have to, to do this, you have to dig in. You have to look at some other scriptures. Maybe you have to look up the meaning of some words. You might even have to get yourself a concordance with the Hebrew and the Greek and, and take a look at it. Amen. What does it really say? Uh, because there are things I have been taught that I have found out are wrong. And there are some things I have believed Amen. and find out I have been wrong. Amen. But what I thought, what I, what I said, what I you know, was taught didn't line up with God's scripture. Amen. And so I want my life to line up with God's scripture. Amen. Somebody the other day was kind of trying to, you know, challenging me on theology. I didn't really get into it with them, but I simply said, my theology is what's in scriptures. And if my theology is not backed up scripturally, it's wrong. Period. Period. There's no question. 
If I teach something other than what's in Scripture, if I believe something other than what's in Scripture, I am wrong. Uh, I am not right. And if you ever hear me say something that's wrong and doesn't add up with Scriptures, I would appreciate it if you let me know. I really do. I want to be where I'm supposed to be with God. And that's in Scripture, not in some uh, church dogma or, or uh, uh, what do they call that? They, they get their list of, uh, there's a, you know, it's the same thing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to be where Scripture is. And that's so important to me. And uh, if you hear people that doubt Scripture one way or another, um, you know, dig in. Dig in and find out why. And dig in and find out they're, you know, the, the translations we have are pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah. There's a few, few places maybe. Yeah. But then you've got to look back. Yeah. And maybe look. Uh, I would almost come to the point where I think we all need to study a little Greek and a little Hebrew. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we're going to be able to speak it, write it, or have all the right interpretations of it. Because we haven't had the four years in college. Which they get about two years. Uh, two yeah, four semesters of the language, and they're considered, uh, you know, uh, proficient, uh, which isn't always true. But um, we haven't had that. But we can, we can dig in. We can find out. Okay. That's my that's my uh, soapbox for today. So let's read Matthew 16. Then Jesus, uh, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, read with me, if you can. Let's start again. I'll slow down a little bit. Not too much. But then Jesus said, then said Jesus unto his disciples, she's, she's got it. If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Right? Let him take up his cross and follow me. Verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Read with me. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a prophet, man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. Okay? All right? Very, very enlightening scripture to our hearts, to our lives, to our minds, to who we are in Christ. And I emphasize that follow me and you're going to probably get a little bit tired of me talking about it right now before we're done. And I just want to look at these words in the next slide. The two words, follow me. Follow me. Two simple words, right? And I've got a definition to follow here. To come and go after, proceed behind. I kind of like that one. We come after Christ. We proceed behind him. That's following him. I really like the next one. Yeah. To go after in pursuit. Yeah. To go after in pursuit of Jesus. To go after in pursuit of who he is. Yeah. Who he is today. Yeah. Where he wants us to be. What is he showing me today? Yeah. What have I read in his word that keeps me on the path that he's on? Yeah. I'm expanding it here a little bit. The next one, to keep under surveillance Kind of interesting because, you know, if I'm in the airport and I'm trying to make it to my next plane, yeah. sometimes the guy that I'm following gets lost in the crowd yeah. or I get lost in the crowd. Yeah. I need to be able to see that person. Right. And uh, flew with Isaac once. I don't know. Not everybody here met my son Isaac. Six foot eight. Six foot stupid, we call it. He can clean the top of my cabinet, so without the ladder. Uh, can't reach the light bulb to have two ball or a ceiling. We tried that, though. Um, but we, we take him by the shirt, get behind him, by the, and he clears the way. You see bodies flying, shoo, shoo, shoo. Yeah. You know, and it's almost, not quite. But he's, you know, people will move out of the way for a guy that big, 320 yeah. pounds. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll move out of the way. Somebody might, like me, they try to step on. I don't let them do it, but you know, I'm a little sharp around the edges. But, you know, we want to see that guy. We want to see that person. We want to keep them under surveillance. It means someone is leading and that someone should know what he is doing. 
And if Jesus doesn't know what he's doing, nobody does. Amen. But Jesus knows what he's doing. Absolutely. And we follow in life so many people that have no idea what they're doing. Amen. We only have one young person here, and so I don't think I'll offend too many. I am a little bit put off when some 20-year-old wants to be my life coach. You know, it, I see some smiles. Okay, good. I thought maybe things were going to start flying at me. But really, you're 20 years old. I could probably teach you a few things. I could probably tell you a few things I stepped in that you, you shouldn't. You know? Even 30-something, you, you know, I'm... Yeah. So at me at 65, I'm not going to tell somebody at 70 what to do. I'm not. No. Somebody at 80 what to do. They got 20, you know, 15, 20 years on me. Yeah. And they've probably been through a few more things than I have. Yeah. In fact, I want to sit and, and hear some of their stories. You know, tell me what they've been through. Maybe I shouldn't do that, that they do. Maybe I should do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And if something I were to tell some young person today it would be, whatever you do, follow him follow, Jesus, yes. follow him amen. when he said follow me follow him amen, amen. me me is more than idea or a cause so many people get onto a cause you know and sometimes they don't even really understand what that cause is there's so many people that follow certain organizations that they're really when you sit down and talk to them they don't even stand what understand what they stand for and what it means. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, some of the animal activist groups and what they do and what they go through, they will actually euthanize, some of them will euthanize your pets because they believe, even though they tell you they, they believe, uh, you know, these animals should live, but they believe that you shouldn't have a pet. Yeah. Yeah. And I was shocked to hear that from PETA. They really believe you should not have a pet. And they will take your pet and tell you they're putting it in a good home and they will euthanize it. And there have been protests from them of people on YouTube for quite a long time because of that. So you, these people that go out a cause may not even understand the cause. He's not, and it's just not an idea that we follow. It is not something big. It is not something hidden. The simplicity of the gospel and the mystery of the gospel is not hidden. When you want to open your eyes, and see. Right. In fact, it's so simple, people go, you know, it can't be that easy. <laughs> I just have to give my heart to Jesus. No, 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 no. You know, have you ever heard somebody say that? I have. It can't be that easy. It can't be that easy. Well, the truth of it is, it can be really hard. I think you said something about it. The living the life of, uh, of a Christian is not for the weak of heart. It's not for the faint. But our strength isn't our strength. It's God's, it's Jesus. I can do all things to Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Amen. Amen? That's right. That's right. Okay. It is Jesus God is God Almighty. The idea that we can follow Jesus casually is a ticket to hell. The idea that I can not live to be a, as a Christian, not live the life that Jesus gave us to live. I was uh listening, and I don't even remember her name, and I don't think I want to, to this gal who's very popular, and she says, claims to be a Christian. She uses the F word a lot. She says she leans towards home, uh, heterosexuality, and it, it's some other things she said along, and it's like, what Bible, or are you even reading in your Bible? And what Jesus, are you already not following the Jesus of Scripture and yet you call yourself a Christian and these athletes and I've said this before I'm gonna say it again I love God I'm a Christian I live with my girlfriend we have a little demented child you know I gamble a lot and I do all these and I'm and it's like you know if you're gonna claim you're gonna be a Christian and you want to mean it live like a Christian be an example. Amen. If you want to be a role model to others, really be that role model. Really be that role model. Love your wife 
love your child, show them the right way to go, the right be, the right commitment to have, and quit using Jesus' name in blasphemy because the way you're living, that's what you're doing. And we in here, we've all done the same from time to time. But I really want to be a Christian. I really want to follow Christ. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I fail. But I will not stand before everyone and say, my sin is okay, and I love Jesus. And that's what they're doing. My sin's not okay. Your sin's not okay. Sin is sin. And uh, I have, well, I have some uh, grandchildren that certainly haven't followed the right way. But you know what? Jesus saves, and Jesus heals. Relationships and everything. And we need that. We need that today. And we need role models. Yes, and sometimes it's, hey, I, here's where I messed up. Yeah. Don't do the same thing. Follow Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And here's a couple other examples. Let's see. The, yeah. Following Jesus is the, is the ticket to hell. I, I debated about saying that. But you know what? It's the truth. It is the truth. And we need to hear that truth. Yes. You know? It's a ticket to hell. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. I'll read this to you. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the net. Yeah, I can say it. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me. Follow me. He said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers. Man, I got to tell you this. You've probably seen it on Facebook, the cartoon, and and Peter's picking up some cards and it says, Peter, fisherman. And he goes and sees Jesus and Jesus says, well, Peter, from now on, you'll be fishers of men. Instead of a fisherman, fishers, you know, fisher. Yeah, anyway, I just thought it was cute. Um, so he's had this look on his face because he just, all these business cards made it. Anyway, before I digress any further, verse 20. And they straightway left their nets and followed him, followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two, another two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And he probably said, follow me, you know? And immediately, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Yeah. Amen. What Jesus said to them, probably them both, we know in the one he did, follow me, yeah. follow me. Follow me. Amen. Let's read this next one too. <clears throat> Matthew 9, 9. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. John 1, 43. The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and said unto him, and then in John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I, I saw in this that a lot of people would say, would say, you know, Jesus just had said that to his apostles, to his disciples, to people then. No, he didn't. John 10, uh, 27 says, My sheep. Who is his sheep? We Everybody go, bye, bye. Okay, you guys aren't good sheep. Don't, don't make the noise. Try again. Bah. You're sheep. You're the sheep. He said that to you. When he came and the conviction of the Holy Spirit came upon you, whether you came down to an altar, whether you stood at an altar, whether you found Pastor Sonny to pray with or, you know, someone else, what Jesus was saying to you was, follow me. Follow me. Interesting thing about follow. And really, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's okay. I can't be doing the things I used to do if I'm following Jesus. When Peter came out of that boat and he said, depart from me, Jesus. I'm a sinful man. And Jesus said, basically, I'm paraphrasing. That's okay, follow me. 
Peter left his sinful life and followed Jesus. Now, Peter couldn't be over here and Jesus over here, so to speak. Well, he could be, but, it, but, not, but he's doing the things Jesus would do. He's living the life that Jesus was living. Not well yet. It took him three years and the day of Pentecost and heaven coming down. It even took even some time after that with some of the things he went through. We all don't arrive at the same place at the same time. And we all don't go through all the same things. Although there are things that we go through that are very common to each and every one of us. Times when we are sitting on our blessed assurance instead of doing the blessed things that God has called us to do. I was, not, I'm not bragging, I just want to let you know. Sitting in uh, Brahms with Sandy at 21st and Harvey, 31st and Harvey, and then a homeless man walked in. And at first I, I said, Sandy, give me your purse. And I put it over on my side where, and, you know, I was kind of boxed in and, you know. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, you need to buy this man some food. And at first, my thought, my first thought, you know, I can't afford that, you know. But he said, I didn't ask you to afford it. I told you to do it. So I said, Tandy, should I buy that guy a bag of burgers? And she said, go ask him. Okay. So I did. And told me a chicken sandwich would be nice. He had two bananas. And from what I could see of everything, he probably spent everything he had. He had to ask for a glass of water before he came and sat down. And I went up and I said, have you eaten? Do you need something to eat? What would you like? Chicken sandwich. So I bought him the combo. And I uh, got to talk to him a little bit. His name was Ezekiel. Just like Ezekiel, he told me, but Ezekiel. And I said, okay, Ezekiel, can I pray for you? You know, and I prayed for him. And I gave him the little dollar bill thing that pastor hands out with the Lord's Prayer on it, has our church address. And I said, here, this is my church address. And uh, I don't know, you know, he asked me if I was from around there. I said, no, I'm from Pan Springs. And I got to pray with him and I told him, you know, you need to call out to Jesus. You need to call out to Jesus for what you need. And uh, I may go look for him again just to see if I can find him over there. But we need to have that kind of life. That's where Jesus would be. That's what Jesus would be doing. Now, I've often stopped short of, God, I can't afford that, and walked away. I can. And, uh, but I want to be, I want to be a follower of Christ. Amen. I can't, you know, unless the Lord and the Holy Spirit would take me, maybe I'd take my hamburger and we'd split it, you know, and it would grow into two. I don't know, it could happen, you know, but I felt I should buy him some food. And I believe that God uses us to touch the hearts of others. You may not be able to change the whole world. You may, Billy Graham, I don't know how many people came through his crusades and gave their hearts to Jesus. I'm sure the, the number is high. Maybe you're not that, but you can change somebody's world. You can touch them for Jesus. You can be what Jesus is to them. Amen. Amen. Let's see. <clears throat> my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. Then in Matthew chapter 16, on the next slide, Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Amen. For whosoever, and it's red, in red, shall, not because it's the words of Jesus, but because I put it in red, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. The disciples left all. Now, at first they expected Jesus to rise up and defeat the Romans. But in three years, they taught it. They, he taught them they were going to die for him. They were going to die for him, all but one. And he was, they attempted to kill him. Didn't work for him. Brother John. Didn't work for him. God kept him alive for a purpose and a reason. But the rest yeah. followed Jesus in dying. All of them. 
Sometimes I think we expect, and with some of the doctrine we have heard through the years, man, if I don't graduate eventually as we go on and things happen and I get the big house and the two cars and the three car garage so I can put my motorcycle in it and the pool in the back, you know, then I'm not blessed and I'm not used and I'm not this and not that. And that's not God at all. God will meet all your needs. And if you have the big pool with the big house, with the motorcycle, with the two dogs and per poodles, whatever they are, uh, what's the most expensive? I don't know. English wolfhounds uh, imported from wherever they come from, uh, you know, then you should be giving as best you can to the cause of Christ Amen. and living as best you can to the cause, the cause of Christ. And if he calls you to sell everything and follow him, do it do it i've heard recently preached a lot from different pastors that i listen to if jesus has given you something to do guess what do it do it don't fight him don't fight him you're losing and you're losing yourself because if you try to find your life you'll lose it but if you lose his lo your life for his sake you'll find it that's an upside down thought to us Americans. Yeah. Now, if you live in India or the Philippines or some of those other places where you're so dirt poor, you're just glad to have fresh water to drink. Where we here, we have the color gun, we have the bottled water. We have, they, they don't have all those things over there, you know. But we are to give, to give, to give. And if we lose our life for the sake of Christ, what a wonderful thing. Yeah. It does not kill the, the, the gospel. All of the apostles that died, all of the Christians that were born, burned in Nero's garden, all of the, those that died upon the cross, all of those in Africa today, in the Philippines today, in India today that are murdered by those who believe they're doing God a favor by murdering Christians, that does not stop the gospel. In fact, you see what it did in the New Testament. It burned the fire of a revival. Amen. It burned the fire of revival, yeah. started the, the forest fire of revival in places and towns and cities. Because people realized there was something worth giving your life for Amen. in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And then we go to the next uh, part. And it says exactly what I just, just talked about. Let's read verse 26. For what is a man profited if he gained the whole world? and lose his own soul? Yeah. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Think about it. How many people do you know who have exchanged Jesus, the God in their heart, yeah. for something of this world? There are those that started singing in church, started, uh, you know, in a, in a, singing in church and uh, got into the world. Yep got into things they ought not be in, gave up everything in, in what they had growing up to live a life in the world, maybe making millions of dollars. Some of them have, I was surprised, I was reading through a list of, of 100 million plus uh, singers, you know, and, and what they have and the cars they have. And after a while, I, it really bored me. Um, but. If you've given up your soul, if you're on your way to hell, none of that. I don't care if you're Bill Gates or, um, or whomever. Right. None of that is worth the eternity in right. hell. It's Amen. not. Right. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I'll ever get to witness to a billionaire. I'd like to. Hey, how's your soul? How's your soul? Where's it going to end up once you die? Well, we're giving half my wealth or all my wealth when I die to charities. Okay, that's nice. What about your soul? What about your soul? Because Jesus says, follow me. Amen. And then uh, next slide at last verse there. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then shall he reward every man according to his works. Now, some of our works 
you know, which begins with our faith. Let's not get that confused. It begins with our faith in Christ, and faith and works go together. If you are living for Christ, your works will show it. What you do shows it. If you're not living for Christ, and you say you are, your works will show that. Amen. They will. And some of people, I don't want to say some of us, because I hope nobody in here is in that category, but some people are going to end up in the end of their life and not be in heaven. True. They will not be in heaven. True. I said this before, I'll say it again when, uh, I won't name it in the name of the, but a very famous basketball player died and on the, uh, Facebook, oh man, what a wonderful person he was. He changed the world. He played basketball. You know, maybe he had a foundation that helps hungry children in New York City. I don't know, which is good. I'm not gonna knock that. But the world he changed was basketball. What about eternity? What about eternity? How many folks did he lead to Jesus? How many folks did he live to Jesus? And I think about that previous, you know, gaining the whole world and losing your own soul. Amen. If we spend our lives living for Jesus and all we see is one soul, all we see is one soul come to Jesus, I'll ask you, is it worth it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is worth it. And because that one soul may, may lead five, and those other five may lead. You don't know. You know, you don't know. But we know what we're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be in Christ. And then in the next slide, there's some people that don't follow him, that were even asked by him. Luke chapter 9, verse 59, and, and he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Now realize, it seems a little of a harsh statement by Jesus. Just a little bit. You know, he wants to bury his father. Well, what he meant, really meant with that, is what I've heard. And that seems to be reasonable. That he wanted to attend to his father until his father died so he could get the inheritance. Now, whether that's true or not, Jesus knew this man. He wasn't pulling one over on him. You know, wasn't pulling anything over on Jesus. Jesus knew his heart. And Jesus told him what he needed to really hear to be where he needed to be. We don't hear anything else of him in scripture. My guess is he didn't follow him. How sad. To be asked by Jesus, you know, and we don't follow him. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but first let me go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Right, amen. Isn't that, that, but isn't it true? Yeah. But I tell you that in my life, there have been times I've put my hand to the plow and taken it off, but I've gone back to the plow. I've gone back to where Jesus wants me to be. And it is so much better where he wants me to be than where I want to go, which is not going to lead me where, in a good place. Is it not? It's not. Well, after I have my fun, I'll follow Jesus. And that what we, what we talked about in, in Kevin, right? Didn't we call you Kevin? Yeah. Kevin wanted to, yeah. I'll have my fun when I'm old and decrepit. I'll call out to Jesus. You may never make it to be old and decrepit. You may never make it that far. And, and the last verse in, in John, Luke, Luke, not John, Luke 18, 22, the rich young man came to Jesus and said, you know, uh, had a conversation with him, and this is what Jesus told him. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, yet lackest thou one thing, one thing you lack, sell all that thou hast, distribute it unto the poor, and thou shalt have, heaven, uh, have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And that verse says, the next verse, <coughs> <coughs> says that the man, young man went away sorrowfully because he had so much. We have to 
get ourselves undetached from the comforts of this world. Well, I like my chair, I like my bed, I like my TV, I like my shows, I like what I get to eat, I like the place when we can go out in a fancy restaurant and eat, and I'm not knocking any of those things. You will probably do them somewhere along your life with Christ. No, no problem with that. But then, but when that is what you live for, you're on the wrong path. Amen. When that is what you're desiring, right. you're on the wrong path. My desire is to serve Jesus, whether I do it in plenty or with nothing in my pocket or my bank account. Amen. It's where we have to be. Where do you want me to go, Lord? There's a song, and I was going to look it up. Uh, we used to sing it from the hymn book. I'm not sure if it's in the one we have. Uh, um, oh. It's 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 a mind thing. It, uh, I'll go where you want me to go. Remember that song? I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. Want me to do? I'll say what you want me to say, oh Lord. I'll go where you want me to go. That's the way we need to be. There's a lot of scripture in that song. A lot of truth in that song. Yes, there is. Let me get back to where I was. Amen. So we need to follow him. We need to, to do according to what uh, he has called us to do. And I think we're about, I only had, I only had 10 slides tonight. Usually I have about 20. <clears throat> okay, and distribute the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven, which is far more valuable than any treasure we could have on earth. Amen. And this is really my, my last slide. John 12, 26, Jesus said, If any man serve me, serve me let him follow me. follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If, anyone, if any man serve me, him my, him my father will honor. Amen. So, when we follow Jesus, we need to be where he is. Now someone might think, well, how can I be where Jesus is? He's up in heaven, right? How can I do what God tells me to do? Jesus is up in heaven. Well, you have something called the Holy Spirit that lives with us. That Holy Spirit is, is like, let me put it this way. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you have seen the Father. And when we have the Spirit, we have the Spirit of Jesus. When we have the mind of Christ because of the Spirit that lives within us, that's what we need. Now, you can't be weird and say you're following Jesus. Example. Young man, that was me, went to camp years ago. We were told, don't go to the women's section. Okay, well, I'm not one to be dumb and get in trouble. Uh, one of the guys in our cabin uh, would always say some pretty strange things. Well, God tells me this. God tells me that. God tells me this. I was savvy enough to know you're a little weird. But he was over in the women's laundry doing his clothes, a place we weren't supposed to be. And I said, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, God said I could do this. Can I tell you there's a lot of Christians like that? They aren't listening to the Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit won't tell you to do something that is dead wrong against Scripture, against authority that's correct authority that's over you. We may have to do some civil disobedience to stand up for Christ. Well, the law says you can't read from the Word of God those passages about sin because it offends people. Well, too bad. We're going to do that. But I'm not going to be, I've even heard stories like this. Uh, well, God told me to marry you. Well, but I'm married to somebody else. God told me to marry you. And so divorce your wife and marry me or divorce your husband and marry me. And some, sometimes they do. That's not God. That is not God. 
And uh, we need to be careful when we walk in Jesus not to be deceived at all. Really let the Holy Spirit lead you, guide you, and follow him. Amen. Amen. Follow scripture. God is not ever going to ask you to do something against scripture. Never, ever, never, 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 ever, never, 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 ever, ever. If you can repeat that four times real fast, I'll be impressed. He's not going to do that. We'll not do it. And so, but we need to be careful that we don't get deceived by someone. Man, somebody says something and you feel that tingle, that twitch, that feeling in your spirit. Go to prayer and start searching scripture. And even go to someone, you know, older than you, more experienced in Christ than you, hopefully. And, and you know, hey, or at least pray with me. And let's make sure this is right, that the Holy Spirit speaks to us about this. Lastly, I want to include something that Paul said. We as Christians need to be Christians, need to be following Christ. And he said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, be followers of me, even as I so I also am of Christ. We need to be able to say to, to those we are challenging to be Christian, follow me. Follow me, because I'm following Christ. <laughs> and as we grow in Christ and we're following someone, we need that check in our spirit. Are they still following? Christ. Amen. Am I still following Christ? Because if you don't follow Jesus, I'm not going to follow you. No way. You know? It's not rocket science. No. But I think we need to be reminded. Yeah. And I'm out yesterday at Brahms and I have this stupid shirt that says what does it say? Oh, those of you who think you know everything really bother us that do. And I'm, I'm, I don't know where, actually we were, might have been in the doctor's office. This guy, went, this guy says, yeah, I don't really like your shirt. And I'm thinking, I don't think I do. I don't think I like this shirt. It's, it's an advertisement and I have, enough, I have enough billboard space. But that's not the message I want to share. That's not what I want to convey to people. But we all have a billboard, whether it's written out or not. And I want my billboard to say, I follow Jesus. And so today I threw that shirt away. And there's some other, I'm gonna go through my closet that my kids have given me over the years. I'd say some kind of stupid things. And I'm gonna throw them away. I'm gonna keep the, I put ketchup on my ketchup, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna throw the others away. Because like I said, what I wanna say if they're going to read my shirt, yeah, I want to say, I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. Amen. I follow him. And I guess I really made my point tonight. We each need to take an inventory. A reality check. And where am I going? Who am I following? Can I prove it? Can I prove it in my life? Well, I spend four hours watching TV every night. Well, maybe you should spend a couple hours in reaching out. I don't know. I'm just suggesting. I used to watch so much football, especially on Sunday. And then the Lord gave me things to do. And I don't watch football anymore on Sunday. I don't even want to watch football anymore on Sunday. And uh, Monday night, they took away, put it on an ESPN. So I definitely don't want to pay to watch TV and, on football on Monday night. I check up on it on the internet a little bit when I'm interested. But you know what? When I get to heaven and I walk through them pearly gates, whether it's Peter or whoever, first thing he's not, first thing he's not going to ask me, or were you a Cowboys fan? No. Would be the answer anyway. You know. Did you follow the Chiefs more than you followed Jesus? Ooh, ooh, ow, ooh. Don't want to do that. Who are you following? Maybe you've gotten off the pace, off the track, off the path, is what I meant to say. 
and uh, we need to get back on it. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean you're not saved. It just means you're not going where you're supposed to go. And it may mean that you take a totally wrong path because you are not following the one who is capable of truly leading you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to stir our hearts. We want to follow Jesus. Stir our minds. We want to follow Jesus. Lord, set a fire inside. We want to tell others to follow Jesus. Lord, uh, open your word to our hearts as we read it, to our minds as we absorb it. Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to lead us in right things, right doing, right places. Be at the right place at the right time to share a word, to share that t-shirt I'm following Jesus. Lord, whatever it might be, use us in ways we've never imagined. That there are hearts and lives whose fate right now is eternally in hell unless they turn to Jesus. And there are those that you have appointed for us to meet and share your word with. Help us not to fail in that. Help us to be what you want us to be. Help us, Lord. Help us in our following of Jesus. And help us when we say, follow me as I follow Christ. To really be the Jesus that just shines in their heart. Because we are full of Jesus. Lord, I just, a moment here, as everyone takes some inventory, Lord, uh, and just confesses or reinforces their following of Jesus. Lord, uh, we thank you that you lived as a great example in Scripture to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yep. And follow me. Yep. Not when you decide that you want to, or when the spirit wants to hit you, or what day. No, uh -huh. exactly. Pastor. Praise the Lord. That was good. Thank you, Harvey, for being obedient. Amen. Amen. Listen, my question to you: Are, are you are you a follower of Jesus, Amen. or are you following your own way, or whatever? you want to call the best way. Let me tell you this, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. You follow him, amen? So if you think there's another way, you're wrong. <laughs> it just, it's just that simple, amen? But you know what? He's called us to be uh, missionaries, to tell others, to tell them that God loves them, that God don't look at your past to determine your future. He knows your past. Big deal. That's gone. That's yesterday. You can't change yesterday, but you can sure change tomorrow. Amen? Praise God. That was a good message. Follow me. Follow me. I think I'm going to get some shirts made up. Follow me. Thank you, Harvey. Praise God. Listen, if there's anybody tonight, and listen, uh, I, I've heard it a thousand times. I've went to church ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. <laughs> Big deal. Did you ever receive Jesus Christ? Because that's what counts. Well, when your time comes and everybody's time will come, let me tell you, I've done three funerals here lately. And let me tell you, it don't matter how old you are or how young you are, 
your time will come. When your time comes and you stand before the Lord and He opens up that book, will your name be there? Will it? Only you know. I can't stand here and look at it and say, you need to. You need. Only you know. And if it's not, don't wait till tomorrow because God didn't promise you tomorrow. You're just gambling and gamblers always lose. So if that's the case, let's do it tonight. Let's pray. Let's, let's, let's be followers, true followers. Not just followers in word, but followers in action. Amen? So I've given you the opportunity. Uh, if you don't want to come forward before everybody, hey, I'll pray with you after. But these altars are always open. You know, I was talking with Brother Audrey yesterday. Wasn't it yesterday? And we was talking about the altars. How no one ever comes to the altar. How there used to always be somebody at the altar. Maybe it's just one, but there was always somebody at the altar. Knelt down praying. And, and a lot of times you had to Scoot over to make room for somebody else. Because we, and we all have problems. We do. None of us are without a problem in our life. Why can't we take those to the altar and lay them down? Because that's what God called us to do. He said, bring it to me. And leave it there. Things to think about. Amen. Amen. Let's close this out with prayer. Oh, yeah, we need to pray for Helen. She's got, uh, huh, the flu. Amen. Uh, so we need to lift her up in prayer. So let's do that right now. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you said if we would call that God that you would answer, you would show us great and mighty things. God, we're calling upon you right now, God, for as our healer. God, as we stand in the gap, we bridge the gap for, uh, for Sister Helen. God, that your healing touch, God, will come upon her. And God, will heal her. We'll take away the symptoms of that flu, God. We'll take that flu right back to the pits of hell where it belongs. And God, that you'll restore her health, God, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, Father. Father, completely and totally healed again. God, we thank you. We praise you, Father. For, Father, I'm, I'm persuaded that what you promised, you're able to perform. And so, God, I'm giving you all my praise for this healing. And, God, we'll give you all the glory. And we do it in Jesus' name. Now, God, as we close out this service, God, we want to thank you, God, for the messenger that you sent in to bring us a word to follow me. Oh, Lord, we're going to follow you, God. We want to follow you. That's our desire. That's our heart's desire is to follow you, Father. And, Father, we thank you, Father, for the message, the encouraging word, God. God, we thank you and we praise you, God. Be with us as we leave your house tonight, God. God, keep us safe and sound. And, God, let us be that light out into this dark world, God. God, to, to show others that, hey, God loves them. And he's there for them, that if they'll just call, he'll answer. And God, we'll thank you, we'll praise you, and we'll give you glory. And we'll do it all in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen.